price of a bond. How do we figure out what that price should be? Especially since that bond is um, not going to get paid back until way in the future. Well, what we use are present value tables. In other words, we make some assumptions about uh, the value of money over time. And we take that promise to pay back the principal of the bond, say 20 or 30 years from now, and we bring it back into current purchasing power. And to do that, since it's a single sum, we'll use table three of the present value tables. And in your text, table three is on page 810. So find page 810, because we're going to be using it. Also, when we issue a bond and borrow some money, we also make a promise to pay some interest. And in this chapter, we'll assume our interest is always semi-annual interest. In other words, I send out the interest checks twice a year. Now, since um, I, again, have to find the present value of those interest payments, which are called an annuity uh, because there's multiple payments, I'm going to use present value table 4, which is on page 812. So as we figure out the price of a bond, remember there's two parts. I have to find the present value of the principal, and I have to find the present value of the interest. Now to show you this example, we're going to do short exercise 4 in your book. And in short exercise 4, it says Rogers Paint is considering the sale of two bond issues. Choice A is a $600,000 bond that pays semi-annual interest of $32,000. So the principal on this bond is $600,000. The interest is $32,000. And we're going to make these $32,000 payments how many times a year? Twice. Okay, it says also that um, this bond is going to come due in 20 years. Now, when we try to find the present value, we have to do two things. We have to know what the N is, the number of periods, and what the R is, what the interest rate is on these bonds. If this is a 20-year bond, I could say N is 20, but it's not. You want to know why? Because these are semi-annual interest payments. So how many checks are going to go out? 40. So that means the N is going to be 40. The interest rate, well, it says that the interest rate on this particular bond is 12%. If it's a 12% bond, that's per year, isn't it? And what's our period? Six months. So the interest rate is going to be 6%, or half of 12. So 12% 12 per year. 6% for 6 months. All right, now, if I go back and uh, which table do I use for the 600,000? Single sum, table 3. So what I'm going to do is take 600,000 and I'm going to go to table 3 in the back of my book on page 810 and I'm going to look in the column that says N and 6% and figure out where it meets and I find a value that I'm going to multiply 600,000 by. And that value happens to be 0 .097. So 0 .097. If I multiply 600,000 times 0 .097, I will find in today's dollar what $600,000 is worth. And it's pretty depressing. It's $58,200. So if I said to you, would you rather have 58200 today or would you rather have 600000 uh, 20 years from now, you go, I don't care, it's the same amount, given these assumptions. The interest of 32000 we remember, is we're going to go to table 3. Oh, not table 3, what is it? Table 4, isn't it? And it's table 4 because it's multiple checks. So it's an annuity. And we're going to look again for an N of 40, an interest rate of 6%, and 32,000 times that value I find in the table is 15.046, 15.046. 
And if I multiply this times 32,000, I will find the present value of 40 checks of 32,000. And it's a little better. It's 481,472. Uh, so if I add these together, this is going to be the price of the bond in today's dollars. So this bond should sell for $539,672. So that's how you get the price of the bond. Find the present value of the principal and the present value of the interest. Now, there's another bond in this problem, and I want you to try to do it. And here's your check figures. So again, in SE4, for your second bond, the second bond price is going to be $517,350. And that is what? The principal and the interest. So check it out.